Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you that I hope will be slightly entertaining for you, um, but first off, it will require us to go to the land of make-believe. That's right, um, imagine that, uh, in the land of imagination here, imagine that a multi-bazillionaire, uh, has decided, you know what, I like this guy's channel. And this is not just like a person with some money, this is one of those people who could buy me, and then buy the requisite Congress people to make it legal to have bought me already. That kind of person, imagine that that person has taken a shine to me and says, you know what, I want you to be able to buy whatever gear you would like, here is my credit card. What would I do? Where would I go? What would I buy if money were not the remotest of practical concerns anymore? If I could, say, even afford California real estate? That's that's crazy, Doc, I know. But I I in that kind of a crazy world, what would I end up purchasing? And so today I've put together my shopping list in case such a billionaire happens to be watching. Please don't buy me. Anyways, um, or do, for that matter. I got a price. Let's be real. So anyways, um, uh, let's go on ahead and start off with some of the cutlery I would pick up in this case. We'll start off uh, relatively small. This is the Kodak Knives Arius, thanks to Blade HQ for the picture. Um, this is a beautiful knife. This is a beautiful knife that the only reason I don't own one is that, simply put, um, it, 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 I wouldn't carry it that much. But the thing is, at this point, the, the, the I wouldn't carry it defense only really works if there's any financial concern. Otherwise, it's just like, that's a knife I'd like to have. Okay, I'll have it. And so this is one that I would absolutely have it. It's a little big for my everyday life, so I know it wouldn't get carried, so I haven't picked one of these guys up. But, my God, they're doing this. <laughs> They're really, really nice. They're doing great work. And so I, I would absolutely get one of these guys because it's one of those, it, it feels to me a little bit like a one that got away sort of situation. Um, absolutely spectacular piece. But uh, I know what you're thinking. Well, Nick, dream big. Well, okay, I'll dream some bigger. There is this little guy right here. This is a fixed blade knife by Tim Zawada. Um, Tim Zawad is a, uh, a, a blacksmith out of Michigan. I don't tend to do fixed blades, but this fixed blade is just absolutely amazing to me. I like it. Oh, hold on. Back. Back. There we go. Um, I like every element of this. I love the little copper. I love the, 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 the Damascus. I freaking like this knife a lot. It is already sold. I don't know to whom, but I would then hire a very expensive private investigator to track this knife down and make that person an offer that they couldn't refuse. Um, and so I would end up with this knife somehow or another. And if you ever see it out for sale, flag me down. I, I'm so in. Um, but this would absolutely be purchased. And actually, while we're talking about Tim's of Water, I would pick up one of his straight razors as well. This is not even the most beautiful of them. This is one of the pretty ones I could find, but he does these amazing Damascus straight razors. I would absolutely be over the moon to own one of them. Um, I, 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 they, they, he just, they, they, they're really, really incredible, but the simple fact is that and dropping 1500 bucks on a straight razor is not something I can responsibly do right now. But it's definitely a temptation. Moving on. Um, I would absolutely find Dr. Frankie. I would track him down and I would say, Doc, you're selling me the Guthrie Scout. And he would say, uh, Nick, no. And I would say, yes. And then I would hire a bunch of people to come in and convince him to sell me the knife. And then uh, I would own this knife. This is just a gorgeous freaking knife. You should check out his channel for a video of it. I don't tend to like, uh, you know... The, the, I, well, okay, I do like fancy freaking knives, although I guess I can't deny that one. But the simple fact is there is some element of this knife that is just like galactic, that's just absolutely amazing to me. And so this is a beautiful freaking knife that I could not afford to buy off of him without, you know, my, my billionaire buddy's help, but absolutely would be interested in doing so. Um, Good good catch there, Doc, uh, and know that I will always be watching and lusting after this knife. Um, Next thing, um, I would then uh, send uh, the, 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 that same team of people down to my buddy Sid um, and ask him very nicely to sell me the Pie Norseman. Um, he actually owns this knife. This is the, sort of the one really, really super unique knife that the Grimsmos have done. Pretty much everything else they've done, they've replicated a number of times over here. They've done a couple of other kind of interesting, odd, unique pieces, but this one is maybe the most unique of all. It is, it's numbered Pie, like three because it was 314, but they also made a Pie one. And it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, it's fully contoured handles. It's, oh, the pie Norseman. I, so I would absolutely be making Sid an offer he wouldn't want to refuse, and that would be a beautiful thing. So um, th th that would be the next one. Um, next, I would do another Protec Custom, maybe a couple more of them. Um, this is probably the fanciest knife I own. This is my um, Custom Protec Sprint, the ultimate cu ultimate gem Custom Sprint. I really, really like this knife a lot. Um, th th there are sentimental reasons for it, certainly, but... I, I am just amazed at the quality of this guy and the engraving. I've fallen in love with the material. All of these things are just gorgeous. And so I every so often Protec will post more of these customs and it'll just be like, yep, 
boom, bought, and, and that would be a beautiful thing, because I really, really do like the looks of them, and they, they, they kind of scratch that weird itch for me, that someplace between production and, you know, a custom knife, and it, uh, they, 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 yeah, I, so that would definitely be on there. Um, I would also, speaking of kind of crazy knives, I would be buying something insane from Beg Knives. Every time I've seen them at a show, I'm always really impressed with some of their higher-end stuff. This stuff with, it's got like the engravings to it, the little gold dot inlays here, I mean, they're not, it's not what I would carry, practically speaking, but these, uh, actually a knife very similar to this one, won my best in show for California Custom Knife Show 2018. Bag Knives does really amazing work, but it's also very, very expensive work that I can't justify right now, but with his credit card, oh, yes, I could. Um, speaking of things I can't justify without his credit card, oh, the Stan Wilson non-flipper flipper. This is a very strange knife, but the simple fact is that this is a flipper knife. It has no flipper tab. The way that this works is you would actually put your finger right here. You see, this is kind of scalloped out here, and, and you pull that back, and this whole bolster here rotates, and that rotating bolster actually provides enough impulse to fire the knife out. And then on the other side, if you pull back that bolster, it actually unlocks the, inter the, the back lock inside there, allowing you to close the knife. And so you end up with a knife that is basically has a secret. It's impossible to open without knowing that secret. It is absolutely amazing. I handled one, you know, with Stan Wilson himself standing right freaking there, and it made a serious impression on it is one of the most unique mechanisms in a folding knife I'm aware of, and I, I, I hope desperately that he works with some higher-end production company to get one made, but uh, failing that, I, I can't think about dropping the 5k these go for, but I... Oh, man, would I kind of like to. So, non-flip flipping is on the list. Next, I would buy more in the way of hand-carved Alamix. I had my Egyptian. It never got carried, and I, I wanted to do some good with it, and so I ended up selling that guy and the the uh, above what I paid for that because it ended up going for like 2500 bucks, which is actually right in line with where I think it deserved to be. But anyways, um, the excess from that is going to go to a charitable... Oh, I got some charitable plans for that money. So, um, but nevertheless, um, I would absolutely absolutely be buying more there. They've got a whole hand-carved series now, and they're absolutely incredible. And they're, they're pricey, but it's hand-freaking-carved. Of course they're going to be pricey. And so I would love to be able to support the kind of art that's doing this by hand by buying a whole bunch of them. But like I said, I'd need that card to do it. Um, custom knives. Look, I'm not a huge custom knife person, although actually the majority of things I've been talking about here have been custom. But one of the custom makers I'd like to have something from would be Michael Walker. Um, Michael Walker is... You know, the Walker line of lock, you heard of it? Yeah, that guy. Um, He does amazing, amazing work. He's just kind of a knife magician. Um, And I, I, I absolutely love, love, love the look of his stuff. And frankly, he's a piece of knife, it's a piece of knife making history. Um, Michael Walker is kind of a national treasure. And so I would love to own some of his work very specifically. Um, Michael Raymond is actually another person who I realized I forgot to put into this, but I would absolutely 100% buy a nice Raymond because holy crap, are they cool. Um, And then the other thing I would do is, well, I've got the credit card here. I would just, I would get in touch with these here companies and I would say, you know what, look, whatever you put out next, just send me one. Just put me on the list with your distributors. Send me one down my way. You've got my credit card on file. Just let it show up at the PO box. And the reason I've chosen these companies specifically is because they seem to have a very good noise to signal ratio. What I mean by that is there's a lot of noise. I'm sorry. There's a lot of good knives coming out of these guys and relatively few bad ones. We knives maybe being the exception. They're a little bit inconsistent, but they're cheap enough that I'm not so concerned about it. And they do drop a lot of really nice stuff. But anyways, I would absolutely want whatever it is Olamic comes up with next, whatever it is Spydeco comes up with next. Uh, we Knife, they're putting out enough good stuff that at the very least, even if I don't love it, I can hand it to some random jackass on the street who wants a knife. And th th that's a beautiful thing. Um, that sounds really sketchy, but like, you know, uh, hey, officer, <laughs> is, that, is that attack force in your pocket? Yeah, take this one. That would be a beautiful thing. Um, Three Rivers Manufacturing, absolutely, whatever they sell, I'm buying. Uh, the Holtz, yeah, just period, yeah. Chris Reeve, yep, I'll take it. Uh, and the Grimsmos, although they, they, they don't seem to be talking about making new models of knives lately, but if they ever do, I, <laughs> I freaking want one. Um, but nevertheless, these folks would just have my credit card on file, and they'd just, like, send me whatever's new. Um, because I, I, I like these folks a lot, and I have a pretty good... Oh, and I'm sorry, Hinderer, I forgot to mention here. Hinderer is kind of surprising on that list for me, but honestly, all of the new stuff he's been putting out lately, even if it ain't for me, has been pretty compelling. So I would definitely put him on the list here and uh, get hooked up with the uh, with that situation. So um, yeah, that's 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 who I would do in, the, in this domain. Um, so that actually concludes the cutlery portion of this. If you would rather not get into watches, 
then go on ahead and skip the rest of this, because that's where I'm going next, uh, which is into horology. That is the science of the capture of time. Um, and, uh, of course, a reminder, do not get into watches. Just a bad idea. There is only suffering here, because... Remember, think to, think to yourself very carefully here. Let's imagine that I wanted to buy a very high-end Michael Walker custom knife. Like a rare, super, super rare. Like maybe, maybe, maybe in the custom knife game, you could get up to like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars And that would be like absurd, right? Like the Stan Wilson non-flipper flip is like five grand. And that's as high-end as that. Uh, no. But no, I mean, you can get into like 40 or 50 grand if you're really, really trying in the watch game. You, I'm sorry, in the knife game. Watch how quickly we're going to get there in watches. So do not get into watches. Anyways, to start with, um, probably the cheapest thing on my list would be the uh, Jager Lecoute, uh Atmos clock. This is not a watch. This is a clock. Um, But this is a really cool clock in that what it's doing here is down at the bottom here, it's got a pendulum. This is a, a clock that you never, ever, 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 ever need to wind. It is a mechanical clock, 100%. But down at the bottom here, it's got a pendulum that rotates very slowly. And inside this guy, there is actually a, a packet, basically, of... I Oh... It's ethylene something or another. Either way, it is a chemical that has a very, very low melting point that is not far from room temperature. And as you, as the temperature just uh, changes over the course of the day, that contracts and expands, contracts and expands, and that is provides enough energy to keep this clock running. And so this is a clock you would literally never need to wind. It is really cool in that it looks really cool, but it's also really cool in its process. And so I love, love, love that idea. And I would absolutely want one of these for my office or something be the classiest thing in my office, including me. So, uh, yeah, that, anyways, I'd like one of those guys, but they're only four to six K. That's, that, that's, that's pretty bargain right here. Moving on. I'm uh, jumping up a level here. We have the, uh, Grand Seiko SBGA 211 Snowflake. This is a really cool watch. Um, and not only is the dial beautiful, but this is a spring drive watch. Now, a spring drive watch is different from your conventional mechanical watch in that a conventional mechanical watch like this Omega right here has a uh, little balance wheel that's going to be rotating back and forth constantly at all times. That's a beautiful thing. It keeps time quite accurately. This guy is absurdly accurate, actually, coming in at like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds a day. The uh, spring drive movement, though, is using still springs. So the entire thing is mostly mechanical parts, but included in there, it actually has a quartz regulator, um, which basically has a spinning disc in there, and then uh, basically a, a set of brakes on that spinning disc that when the watch is running a little too fast, will slow it down a little bit relative to the quartz regulator, and when it's running too slow, will lighten up a little bit. And so as a result, you get absurd quartz-like accuracy from a watch that is still fundamentally mechanical. It's completely unnecessary. You can get just as good accuracy, if not better, from a general quartz watch. But the simple fact is it's amazing, and this is a beautiful watch, and it's all titanium. I, it, yep, I want one. And it's only, only 5800 bucks. So, you know, okay, that, we're starting small here. Jumping up a step here. A lot of people have asked, Nick, you know, why don't you have a Rolex? Well, the simple fact is, have you seen California real estate prices? No. Um, th th that's why I don't have a Rolex. But um, if I had to get one Rolex, it would be this one. This is the Rolex Explorer 1. This is a very, very low-key sort of watch. It is time-only. There's not even a date function, which is one of the other main reasons I don't have one of these yet. Um, that bugs me a little bit. But the simple fact is, it is a beautiful watch. It is a watch with a great deal of history. And it's a watch with a lot of modern niceties. It's very anti-magnetic. It's just, it's well done. It's a durable watch. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's a really solid piece. It is 6,500 bucks. Damn it. They, they, they're going for more right now because Rolex is playing games with supply and demand. But the simple fact is you should not pay more than the retail price for this of 6,500 bucks. Um, this, but anyways, I would absolutely like to get a Rolex Explorer one and one of the modern ones with the loom on it. It's just beautiful because they do have nice loom with the quick link clasp, etc. I, this would be the Rolex I would go to, you know, then. Um, after that, you know, of course, I don't have a chronograph. And of course, because I have a problem, I want a chronograph. And so the way I would go would be this guy. It's the Breitling Navitimer 1 B01. One. Um, it's an iconic watch. It is absolutely beautiful. I have a review actually up of this watch exactly on my uh, on the channel there. 
And I find it really, it's weird, it's busy, there's a lot of numbers on it, but it's a really cool freaking watch. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got heritage like crazy. This is, if I had to buy a chronograph that was mechanical, this is the one I would do. 100% uh, without a doubt. It's just, it's just nice. And so, and that's only 8215. Come on, we're looking at bargains here. Moving up a little bit, we have the Rolex Datejust. Um, this is perhaps the classier, well, it's a classier watch than anything I own. Like I said, this is classier than anything I am. Um, but still, it's a very, very nice watch with the Jubilee bracelet, with the fluted bezel, all of that beautiful stick indices and whatnot. This is a really, really nice watch. It's about 10 grand, so yeah. But if I wanted to have, you know, a, a fancy, a dressy sort of thing that's not completely over the top, this would probably be where I go. Um, absolutely a beautiful freaking thing. Um, Patek Philippe. Uh, and by the way, no, 10000 $40,000. We have jumped up an echelon right quick. And this is in Patek's mid-range here. But Patek Philippe is a very interesting company. They are uh, Swiss, as you might imagine. But they are uh, they do very interesting work. Very nice finishing, things like that. And the Patek that actually is the most interesting Patek, I suppose, that's most interesting to me is this guy, the Aquanaut. Absolutely a beautiful freaking watch. The Nautilus is another one of these, but I don't I don't know. I don't find it quite as compelling. This is just a really, really nice piece. Um, comes on a very nice rubber strap. I uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, for forty grand, yeah, I'm gonna need his credit card to do it. But uh, nevertheless. Yeah, I'd pick one up. Uh, it's nice to say you got a paddock, right? Uh, then let's go a little bit higher up now. Uh, at $79,000, I would do the FP Jean Chronometer uh, Resonance. Now, why? Well, as many of you may know, I am in the acoustics. That is my field. I am a published acoustician and whatnot. So um, acoustics is kind of my jam. And this is an interesting watch in that you can see here it's got two faces on it. They, they are both showing us the time and in seconds and minutes and hours and whatnot. Um, but the interesting thing is lots of watches do that. This one has two movements in it. You can see here, here's one balance wheel, here's the other one. These two balance wheels start to synchronize. They are running in synchrony. This is an acoustic phenomenon. If you go online, like look on YouTube and look for metronome synchronizing, just search that. What you'll see is that if you put a bunch of metronomes on a table um, that's it, got some sway to it, after a little while, the metronomes will all synchronize. And that's just because of physical resonance. And this works on that same property. Um, these two uh, balance wheels will synchronize. And as a result of them both being synchronized, they will actually help to equal each other out to greater accuracy. This is completely freaking unnecessary. Again, you will get better accuracy with a high accuracy quartz watch or something like that but the simple fact is it's physical resonance in the watch form and you get the and it's freaking gorgeous i i want i want i want it's only 80 grand so you know i i don't think the the, the billionaire would really feel that one but still that's that's definitely i i that would go 100 percent in the oh my god yes so uh fp jean chronometer um next thing I, of course if i'm gonna be a watch snob i need a tour uh tourbillon and i know what a lot of people are thinking nick omega tourbillon really but the simple fact is i like this watch i find it very attractive i like the rose gold and in fact, I, th there were some very nice options, like the Omega Globemaster in rose gold. Yeah, that'd be cool, too. Um, but I like this watch a lot. As the central tourbillon, which is actually the movement itself, and the escape wheel itself is rotating inside the center of this watch. Got hours, minutes. It's just nice. It's just beautiful. It's also $156,000, so I don't think I'm going to pick one up otherwise, but it's absolutely a beautiful thing, and I, I just like the aesthetic over and over. Uh, you know, it's a little subdued for a tourbillon. It just, it's just nice. So um, there's that. Now let's take it up a little notch, because I know what you were thinking, Nick. I mean, uh, $156,000. I mean, that, that you're still in budget territory here. Come on, man. That dial it up a little bit. You dream big. Okay, I guess. Um, So then we're going to the Dibitoon, uh, the DB20. 25L Milky Way. Holy crap, look at this thing. This is, I believe, to be an anodized titanium, which is neat. Um, but, oh my god. The, the, the little gold star appliques, the hands, it's got this futuristic sort of thing, articulated lugs. Oh, oh, oh my god, yes, I want one of these. They are $223,000. I will never own one of these, but the simple fact is, I take it. If you, I'll give you my P.O. box. Just let me know. It should be an email. I'll take yours. I'll take it off your hands. Give it a nice home. 
This is absolutely a gorgeous freaking watch, and I, I would not hesitate to pick one of these guys up, given that opportunity. Speaking of things I wouldn't hesitate to pick up, this is a R.W. Smith Series 4 uh, watch. Now, I recommend, if you are remotely into watches, which, by the way, you should not get into watches, but uh, if you are remotely into them, you should check out R.W. Smith's uh, YouTube channel. He has a just a small series of videos, not that many, unfortunately, but where he talks about the elements of hand finishing, the dials, the hands, all of these things. The these are watches that are made by hand. They are by hand. You know, look, I like this Omega a great deal, but the thing is, it is entirely a production watch. Every part of this is made by machines. Um, it may be assembled ultimately by hand, but all of the, the, the component parts are put together by machines. This is a watch where every step of it is done by hand, by using, in some cases, like lathes and things like that, but it is done by one human, or I guess maybe a team of humans, I'm not sure, but the simple fact is, oh my freaking God, is this thing pretty? And to have that much work put into it, yeah, um, unfortunately, it is also $325,000, which is, um, well, the price of a house anywhere in the world but California, uh, and that is absolutely a beautiful freaking thing for them, uh, but for me, th th this means there is no way in heck I could ever afford one of these guys, and there's also a many-year wait list, and even this price was hard to find. I suspect it's probably gone up. That's from some weird, obscure website that had a feature on them, uh, starting at $325,000. Yeah, like, okay, <laughs> if that's where it starts, that ain't where it ends. I'll tell you that much for sure. So, I would pick one of these guys up in a heartbeat. Then, you know, I, I think we need to, you know, go maybe a little bit higher here, and now we have the uh, Long Ed Zone Sightwork Minute Repeater. So, this is to things. Um, this is actually a, uh, uh, this is a, a mechanical watch here. Even though this looks digital, it has a mechanical movement in there controlling that. These numbers jump over from time to time, back and forth. I've actually had one of these, not the minute repeaters, on my list, or on my wrist, that is, in Vegas, which was absolutely really cool. Um, but I love both the digital mechanical thing that, 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 that tickles me in a very weird way, but I also very much like the style of it, and it's a minute repeater. Here, I'll show you what a minute repeater does. I actually happen to have a minute repeater watch right here. Uh, and that is this little guy right here. This is the Breitling Aerospace. And if I press this in... So that's 10 beeps. Two quarters. One minute. So right there, we know it's 1031. Huh? Huh? Is that useful in any way, shape, or form? Is there any situation in life where I, uh, I would have gone, Oh my God, I need a minute repeater right now? Nope. Not once. Never. But is it cool? Yes. These are the little hammers that strike these little gongs here, these little metal pieces. Oh, my God, yes. I, 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 $437,000. Yeah, that's a freaking bargain as far as I'm concerned with his credit card. So, absolutely 100%. This is this is something I would pick up. Um, Then, speaking of things that, you know, right now we've been talking about watches that you can actually, you know, buy in theory. This right here is the uh, Citizen 0100 Movement Watch. This is um, slightly different. Uh, this is a mechanical watch on the very high end. This is a quartz watch, but it is not for sale. The reason it is not for sale is that it is a prototype. They, they, there was one of these released for, I think, Basel 2018. They, they keep talking about putting this movement into actual watches, and I will do my absolute best to get one of them if I can possibly afford one. But the, the thing about this quartz movement here is that this is accurate. So your average mechanical watch is, okay, so your average like little Seiko 5 sort of deal might be between 15 and 30 seconds a day off. Um, meaning every day you'd, you'd gain some place in that domain. It's not, you know, acceptable, but it is what it is. A good mechanical watch and the, the, the cost sort of spec would be between like negative 3 and plus 5 seconds a day. Every day you wear it, it'll be, you know, more or less it'll gain or lose that much time. A really good mechanical watch, this little Omega guy here, for instance, is running, like I said, around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds a day. That's, uh, that's very, very impressive, actually. Your average quartz watch, your door, the Explorer box quartz watch, is going to be around 0 0.2 seconds per day, and a really, really nice quartz watch, a high-accuracy quartz. This guy I have actually clocked to being around 9 seconds per year accurate. Now, this guy ups that ante a little bit. They claim that this watch movement is accurate within one second per year. That's completely absurd. Um, seriously, think of anything that you could do every second of every day for one entire year and not deviate by one second in that year. 
That is absurdly accurate. I love it. I freaking love it. I love it. I have no reason to love it. This is not necessary, but I want it. It is really cool. Like the metrology element of this, like measurement of time at this accuracy in something you hold and you, I, oh my God, I don't know why I'm irrational. I'm insane, but I want this. So I would absolutely pick one of these guys up. But the thing is, I know what you're thinking. Well, Nick, okay, hold on, hold on, back up a little bit. Uh, you, you've got to watch now. And they, they, they're not for sale, so, but uh, you've got to watch now that is, pl you know, plus or minus one second a year accurate. How, how do you set that? What do you set that to? Well, to answer that, I think I would need my final piece of horology, and that is this little guy. This is a micro semi 5071A cesium atomic clock primary frequency standard. That's right. Um, I would probably have to buy an atomic clock uh, because, again, I, I just I need to make sure that my watches are set accurately. And so this is the very, very best way to do this. This is using cesium atoms in a very specific configuration such that there is a, an oscillation that can be measured pretty accurately over time. And you you, you, you would have then an atomic clock in, so, and I just put it, you know, maybe under my watch box or something like that. And, you know, I get up in the morning, I want to set the Omega Tor beyond. Oh, okay, here, I'll, I'll pull up the atomic clock. Okay, cool, we're good. And that would be... <laughs> That'd be kind of neat. Do I have any reason? No, but the thing is, I I got a billionaire's credit card, so why not, right? So um, that 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 to me is what I would end up picking up if I had the um if I had the billionaire's credit card. Um, a whole bunch of completely excessive goods in every domain, but that's why you get a billionaire's credit card, as well as a whole bunch of really high end cutlery. And uh, there you go. Hope you found this interesting. Do not get into watches or atomic clocks for that matter, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.